The 2.7 liter turbo was designed from the ground up as a truck engine. Uh, the engine actually makes 310 horsepower, 348 foot-pounds of torque. Really cool thing is it makes that torque at 1500 RPM all the way through 4000 RPM. Uh, it's 160 pounds lighter than our previous base engine, the 4.3. It's going to have 13% improvement in city fuel economy. And overall, the truck has gained uh, towing capacity with 7,200 pounds max with this engine, about 2,000 pounds payload, so a pretty good increase over our current generation truck. Uh, for a crew cab, the whole truck got about 450 pounds lighter and more legroom in the back for everybody to be able to jump in and, and store their gear. Compared to our current generation 4.3 liter engine, which is our base engine, uh, it is a 13% city fuel economy improvement over the truck with a higher towing capacity and higher load capacity. The engine team was given a challenge to develop a truck engine for our base vehicles that performed great, had lots of torque. They ended up at a four-cylinder engine because they wanted low-end torque. They put a dual volute turbo on this engine so they can actually bring exhaust in from both sides of the turbo and eliminate the pulsing that you normally have with a turbo and actually spool the turbo up much faster. The 2.7 liter is 160 pounds lighter than the 5.3 liter engine. It's about 80 pounds lighter than our current generation base engine, the 4.3. The 2.7 liter is actually coupled to our eight-speed trans. The integration, uh, you know, driving quality, feels nimble, feels good. It kind of drives small, but performs big. It's still a full-size truck can still tow with it, you can still throw 2,000 plus pounds in the bed for, for payload capacity. So maintenance wise, there's, there's really no changes between our current generation 4.3 engine and our 2.7 liter engine. It's gonna be normal oil changes. There's nothing else special that needs to be done from a maintenance side. Uh, and this thing is tested to the same standards as our legendary 5.3 liter and 6.2 liter engine. So uh, durability is not gonna be a concern. So the turbocharger is an industry first. It's a dual volute turbo. Um, what we've done with the turbo is we've literally designed the engine around the turbocharger. So we took and said, we need the best turbocharger. We need to package it in the best way so that we can get that performance and we can get that low end torque that our customers really want. So people talk about diesels and, and they love to drive diesels. Our intent with this engine was to try to give diesel like torque, which is at 1500, 348 foot pounds and deliver that and do that all on a gas engine and also make the power that a gas engine does. So diesels tend to fall off. This keeps pulling all the way through. So uh, zero to 60 in 6.8 seconds. Um, so really quick, really nimble. Um, we're able to do that because the engine's a little lighter. Um, we're 80 pounds lighter than the base engine that used to be in these trucks in the previous gen. Um, we're able to do that um, by taking out mass in every little area, um, even the bolts, the, the tips of the bolts have mass reduction features, um, as you can see right here. And so every attention to detail was, was put on this engine in order to take mass out. Again, getting back to the turbo, some really important aspects of the turbo, which make it really efficient is the arrangement of our exhaust system. So as you can see here in this movie, the turbo is placed directly in the middle of the engine. One of the key attributes to making a super efficient turbo, it's all about the exhaust pulses. You can see you've got a, an integrated exhaust manifold here that's shaped a lot like a, like a header on a race engine. So equal lengths all the way from the end cylinders to the center cylinders to the turbocharger. And we were able to do the industry first on a gas engine of dual volute where the pulses come in, they're 180 degrees separated from one another so that they don't have any crosstalk and lose pressure. So we're trying to get maximum pressure to the turbo and get that turbo to spool up. So this turbo spools up um, super, super quickly. At 1500 RPM, less than two seconds, it's able to go from um, idle, idle torque, so no torque, all the way to, uh, to peak torque. Real world fuel economy, one of the things we've done here is the integrated exhaust manifold and the arrangement of the turbocharger. Again, really focusing on the turbocharger. Um, it's a key aspect of the engine. We're able to 
take out heat as it's going into the turbo and uh, we don't need to do as, an, as much enrichment to cool the turbo. So what that means is when you're towing with this and you're really working it hard, um, it's, it's gonna get better fuel economy than, uh, than some of the other engine arrangements that are out there. One of the other technologies that we're really proud of to deliver fuel economy is our sliding camshaft. Our sliding camshaft does a number of things. It delivers active fuel management so it turns off two of the center cylinders. So literally it runs on two cylinders. Um, it's not that scary. These cylinders are really big. Um, 675 cc's per cylinder, this, uh, this engine. So that's pretty similar to the 6.2 liter running uh, DFM where it goes all the way down. Dynamic fuel management takes that engine, uh, which is also an introduction in the 2019 Chevy Silverado. Um, takes that down to two, two cylinders. So pretty similar there. Um, Chevrolet and, uh, and GM have been doing active fuel management for quite some time. Something that, uh, that we're really proud of and something that we're able to, to get really good fuel economy. But more importantly, um, camshaft design is, is really pretty neat. Um, when you design an engine or if you're building an engine, even in your garage, there's a lot of times where you get the cam catalog out and you say, oh, I really like the fuel economy cam, but I gotta have the power cam, or I'd like the, the power cam and I gotta have the fuel economy cam. Um, and then you end up making a compromise. We didn't need to compromise. We have both a high lift cam and a low lift cam. Um, so a fuel economy and high lift, and then uh, our active fuel management cam. So zero lift for active fuel management on two cylinders. Um, and you can see the low lift cam and then the high lift cam. So this is able to switch seamlessly using electric actuation. Um, there's an electro motor here that takes and solenoid motor that takes and pushes this pin down into this axial cam and the cam shifts back and forth. So actually um, pretty simple technology, um, just the execution of it. Um, fairly complicated, we make this in-house uh, to control quality, um, and we make this out of a billet piece of steel. So it's machined on very sophisticated CNC equipment, um, and we are able to, to produce this in-house for this application. One of the things we wanted to show is our tilt stand uh, durability testing, and if you, if you come in closer, you'll be able to see uh, this engine running on our tilt stand and what this does is it replicates a truck going downhill, twisting and turning. We experienced a little bit of that today in the Colorado Bison. Um, really a neat exercise where we were rock climbing going off, going off, um, off on trails. So what you can see is the turbo is, uh, is starting to glow. This engine's under full load and you can see it rocking back and forth. This tests our engine to ensure that we've got really good lubrication. We're not starving it um, under these conditions. So uh, a really neat piece of equipment that we've got at General Motors. Um, it, it makes our engine really durable. Some of the other things that we've done for the engine is uh, we've chosen very much diesel-like components. Um, because the engine produces diesel-like torque and diesel-like cylinder pressures, we needed to employ some of the same technology that a diesel would um, to make it durable. So one of the things here is the piston. So it all starts with the piston, right? You're applying the pressure to the piston. The top of the piston is fully machined. That's done to take off any of the casting imperfections that you can get in the casting process on the piston, which could then result in cracks. We then put in a cast iron ring carrier for the top ring. So if you just have a traditional piston and a gas engine would be all aluminum, when you apply that heavy cylinder pressure that this engine is under to the, to the top ring, if it's hitting aluminum, it's obviously not as strong as it hitting cast iron or pushing on cast iron. So that lets that, cat, that top ring push against something that's very durable to not have ring pound out and ring wear. The next thing is the connecting rod. So power is transferring down here. This connecting rod is one of the strongest connecting rods we've ever designed at General Motors for a gas engine. The connecting rod is connected uh, to the crankshaft through a bearing. The rod bearing in this case is tri-metal rod bearing. 
also a technology that's used on, on light duty diesels. Uh, the tri-metal bearing is something that uh, it's very good for embedment, it's very good for wear protection, stiction, um, very, very high-end bearing. Um, no expense spared on the power cell, which is the piston, the rod, the rod bearing. Then it's connected to the crankshaft. Crankshaft is uh, forged steel. Um, again, one of the best processes we know how to make a, make a crankshaft. So we focused on durability to give our customers the durability that they expect from a Chevy Silverado.